LiDAR is, is a fool's errand. Anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. Expensive sensors that are, are unnecessary. It's like having a whole bunch of expensive appendices. Like one appendix is bad, well, now they want to put a whole bunch of them. That's ridiculous. Yesterday, Consumer Reports ranked Tesla's autopilot as a distant second. Today, I want to talk briefly about why the Consumer Report rankings are very, very misleading, and also just explain what passive optical is versus LiDAR and why Tesla's method of achieving self-driving is, in my opinion, superior. Based on some arbitrary metrics, they are ranked second, but if you really look at the technology they are developing, they are still set up to be number one. And by most metrics, they definitely are number one. The reason Tesla has landed number two, though, is not because of their performance and capabilities. They were actually ranked one in that metrics, but it was mainly regarding safety. So Cadillac ranked number one because they have a eye tracking system to make sure you're locked into the road. And from their perspective, whatever self-driving system locks you onto the road is ultimately safer. And Tesla only has you keep your hands on the wheels, which is not as safe because you could not be paying attention. So by Consumer Reports metric of what's going to keep your attention on the road longer, that's why Cadillac won. Because Cadillac is not close as Tesla to actually solving full autonomy. Tesla isn't going to hold your hand and force you to look at the road. They expect you to be an adult and not baby you into paying attention when driving your 30, 40, hundred thousand dollar car. So let's go back to this video from 2019. This is Andre Karpathy, the senior director of artificial intelligence. You might be familiar that there are uh, at least two sensors uh, in the car. One is vision cameras, just getting pixels. And the other is LIDAR that a lot of uh, companies also use. And LIDAR gives you these point measurements of distance around you. Um, now, one, th one thing I'd like to point out, first of all, is you all came here, you drove here, many of you, and you used your, <laughs> your uh, neural net and vision. You were not shooting lasers out of your eyes, and you still ended up here. <laughs> we might have. <laughs> so I mean, things I went know, well. That's good for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, the human neural net uh, derives distance and all the measurements and the 3D understanding of the world just from vision. It actually uses multiple cues to do so. I'll just briefly go over some of them, just to give you a sense of roughly what's going on. And, so essentially what Tesla is trying to do is recreate what your eyes do. So what he goes on to say past this is like even animals, they have eyes on the sides of their faces. It doesn't matter. When you are moving, you get information. For us, because our eyes are in the front of our faces, we have two points of reference and we can easily distinguish depth using the vision from two different angles. In this part of the video, we see they actually reconstructed the city using just a camera. Now, essentially what LiDAR does, and this might be counterintuitive because it looks more high tech, right? It shoots out this laser and it, whatever it hits, it gives you back information. So it can give very accurate information on the physical objects around you and whatever the laser is hitting. But the thing that makes Tesla's use of cameras superior though, is that using their neural network, they are actually working on being able to distinguish what every individual object actually is you can still know depth using cameras from different angles and by using movement and this is a really important slide people drive using vision that visual recognition and very powerful visual recognition is is absolutely necessary for autonomy it's not a nice to have like we must have neural networks that actually really understand the environment around you and uh, and lidar points are a much less information rich environment. So vision really understands the full details. Just a few points around are, are much, um, there's much less information in those. So as an example on the left here, um, is that a plastic bag or is that a tire? A, a LIDAR might just give you a few points on that, but vision can tell you which one of those two is true and that impacts your control. Is that person who is slightly looking backwards, are they trying to merge in, into your lane uh, on the bike or are they just, uh, or are they just going forward? In the construction sites, what do those signs say? How should I behave in this world? The entire uh, infrastructure that we have built up for roads is all uh, designed for human visual consumption. So all the signs, all the traffic lights, everything is designed for vision. And so that's where all that information is. And so you need that ability. If you are just using LiDAR, it would be able to sense all of these objects around you, 
but it would not be able to tell if this was a tire or a plastic bag. If you're just using LiDAR, you would sense that, okay, there's a person in front of you. It doesn't have enough information to know based on this rider's face, whether he's about to merge in your lane or he's about to go right. It can't necessarily read all these signs. It could sense the objects, but it has no detailed understanding of the world around us. And that is what passive optical gives us in combination of the neural network. So it's not just cameras that can see, but it's a whole comprehensive learning system that is learning more and more about our world the moment it's scanning this area right here it can actually read the signs it can decipher that these are traffic cones it knows that these are trees versus lidar by itself it doesn't know anything it just knows how to avoid not hitting these objects generally speaking with passive optical you've taken care of all visible wavelength stuff you want if you, you, you want to use a wavelength that is occlusion penetrating like radar so, so LiDAR is just active photon generation in the visual spectrum. If you're going to do active photon generation, do it outside the visual spectrum in the radar, in the radar spectrum. Basically, all of the things LiDAR can do, passive optical can basically do better. And then for the edge cases where you can't see quite as well, they are using radar, which is a much cheaper alternative. The other thing I forgot to mention is that LiDAR is very, very expensive. It's what was used on uh, the top of the Google cars that would uh, map out our world. It costs $70,000 at the time. I don't know if the price has calmed down now. Again, this is why Tesla is winning and will continue to win because not only are they so incredibly cost conscious, they don't want to do anything that's going to cost the consumer more money. They are also willing to really, really, truly invest in the future where according to consumer reports, they are actually in second place, but if you look at the details, they're far and above all the competition because they are trying to solve the whole thing. They're not trying to make something that still requires the driver to be engaged. That's just not the future. Elon Musk says himself that in space, you know, when there's no other objects, when you need accuracy, LiDAR definitely has a place and it works really well in that context. But in our human world where we have so much visual information to decipher when we're driving, even when we're walking, passive optical in combination with radar is the way to go. And I don't really see any companies doing this or giving us a viable alternative for full autonomy. That's it for today. Please like and subscribe if this was helpful or useful at all. This is Green Knight Trading where scribes become knights. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon.